Hey, what's up, everybody? Give me an audio check if you don't mind. Audio check, please. One, two, one, two. All's good. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Glad. Uh, thanks for those nice comments. The first few of you guys. I appreciate that. Um, one was like, you helped me pick up the pencil again. That's, that's pretty sweet. That's what I'm here for. So that's, uh, that's awesome stuff. So yeah. So today I figure we can do some, uh, sketching in, uh, Manga Studio here, Clip Studio Paint and, uh, do a little bit of, uh, poses, which is always a, a great thing to warm up with. Um, which I've already warmed up today, but actually this will uh, be the warm up for the live stream. So, but yeah, we'll just do some. Uh, yeah, thanks for the nice comment, you guys. That's that's fantastic. Um, so yeah, I brought the live stream back to YouTube. I just felt it would be a little bit better. It seems uh, seems to be a bit better, I think, anyways, for everybody involved. And uh, today I thought we'd do some poses. Um, so let me let me take a new canvas here and show you what I'm talking about as far as constructing some poses um, one of the things that I think is important when doing poses is like doing a, a kind of a three main masses kind of thing so the head the upper uh, torso and I'm going to draw this real simplistic just to kind of you know show you how I want to stretch uh, basically stretch the pose so here's the torso and then the pelvic so just try to get them in there with basic uh, rudimentary forms nothing too extravagant and connect it with a little action line for the spine the spine up here to the neck or you know the neck area and then that's it so if you if you kind of start thinking about it like this then it makes it real easy to do those complex poses so I'll set this guy off to the side and show you what I mean there so if we take that again and then we try to contort that pose uh, as you probably know with like gesture drawing uh, you want to sometimes get, or not sometimes, pretty much all the time, get an action line going. So maybe you're doing a character punching upward like this, and you want this this uh, motion of their action going through the scene kind of like this. So put a nice curvature in there. And you don't have to necessarily draw the line and stick to that, but it's a good idea to to kind of get this flow going first, and your, your pose will have a little bit more movement in it. So let's see if I can make that happen. So I'll put the the head here I usually draw like a little bit of a, a direction to the head like this and then I'll do like the torso um, you may want to contort the torso a bit so you could have the chest pointing away from the head uh, a bit like this maybe show the the point to the um, soloplex ribcage all that and then, you know, you can remember, I'll usually define the soloplex or the, the midsection with like three segments so that it helps me to remember that these areas can contort and twist like that. And then you can have the hips, you know, pointing in a different direction. So essentially realizing that you can pivot the head, the upper torso, and the pelvic each a little bit differently. You know, and you want to be careful. Obviously, uh, you know, comics are really well known for taking this too far but I, I think you know we're doing comics it's probably a little bit better to err on the side of too far than not enough uh, to get some real expressiveness in your work but yeah if you uh, if you look uh, on uh, comic book poses you know if you google something like that you'll see a lot of people kind of you know really uh, <laughs> kind of condemning comics for the way that we overstretch the pose sometimes especially with the uh, female characters so you know you just take it like that and then once you get used to maneuvering these uh, these three masses and really stretching uh, the boundaries of them and obviously studying them from life and seeing how far they they really contort versus what you might be drawing in there then you can really easily assemble the arms I think you know so you got the arm going with this flow of uh, the action line you've got this leg kind of bending maybe this way and then and then back just like kind of getting hidden back here and receding into space and then another thing that's real popular uh, with comics is always kind of hiding an arm uh, I don't know from this pose it'll be necessary but I'll I'll try to tuck it back here a little bit and bring it out throw like a, just a quick fist or something on there
And the real purpose of this is not to get too caught up in um, details at this stage. Just really just feeling it out and putting it in there. It doesn't matter if it's pretty. It doesn't matter if it's correct. Uh, there's lots of time for refinement later on. But it's really important that you don't let that bog you down and stop. You know, I wouldn't consider this one actually a good uh, pose. But you also got to knock out a bunch of bad poses to sometimes get to some good ones. So I would kind of just start with this and warm up and see what I get to. Let me read a couple of these comments because there seems to be a few coming in. Uh, let's see, can I just ask? I always wondered, do you have your hand put on the tablet or have it lifted up touching with just the pen? Uh, I, I guess I change it up a bit. I generally keep my hand off the tablet for the most part when I'm using my Cintiq, but uh, Sometimes I'll recline it down and then and lift my chair up and kind of hover over it like a traditional drawing. Uh, there is a little bit more control that you get with your hand being on the on the device, but I don't do that always. So it's uh, it's really just dependent on how I feel that day. Lately, I've actually been setting up my uh, my tablet on a larger table and standing up while I draw. Uh, that's more for my back and stuff, because so, <laughs> I draw for long hours and you know sometimes my back will. Uh, start hurting from sitting in the chair too long so I've actually been like trying to make my own uh, makeshift uh, uh, what do you call it those uh, ergonomic you know standing desk or whatever you know something like that but I did it with my uh, my light table you know it's like the poor man's version uh, hey I hope you'll answer but um, what do you what's your advice to people who suck being creative uh, alright and then you said and oh that is depressed um, you know, I, I don't know how to answer that other than, you know, you just have to keep creating. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, like, I go through some terrible mental blocks sometimes. I'm kind of going through one right now, to tell you the truth. And um, so, and I don't know if you guys ever notice it in my work or what, but I, I hope not. But it, it does happen. And it's just part of life as an artist, as, as a creative person. Um, you know, I mean, if it's depression, you know, I don't want to give real advice there. But, you know, you should probably... Uh, do things that make you happy and excited and, and, and talk to people about it if it's depression. I don't really know how to answer that. But at the same time, when it comes to drawing and being creative, you just have to keep creating. And I know that sounds like such a typical response, but you just have to kind of force through it. Um, you, they're not, we're not all going to have great days every day when we're creating and drawing. It just doesn't work that way. Um, you know, you'll get to a, a better level each time you persevere through it. And pretty soon the things that you struggled at will become easy. So more, you'll have more of those good days with your art. But at the same time, you can't worry too much about that. And you got to just continually create because um, if not, you'll you'll give up. And that's not, you know, you never get to where you want to go by giving up, right? So you gotta you gotta just stay positive and focus on producing stuff and and just really focus on what you love because. You'll always that'll always help you get through those tougher days. If you're drawing stuff you're just not passionate about, then of course you're gonna have a lot more days where uh, stuff's gonna come out. It's gonna be tough, and 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 you're not gonna be excited about what you're doing. Obviously. Uh, what do you recommend better to understand proportion of the human body? Um, that can be a tricky one. It's basically like like all right, for instance, even with this, this is a really awkward pose and character and I probably should just move on but I always like to try to refine it a bit further but I'll do things like this so I just hit like command shift T and I'll move this arm around because I know something's off about it obviously it's too long for one and I'll usually measure parts of the body with other parts of the body so uh, for instance if I work on this guy over here real quick I may take the leg you know, it's kind of bad bend there um, I may take the leg like this and say that the leg generally the upper part of the leg is usually right about the same distance as the upper part of the body here and then the upper part of the leg is usually about the distance from the knee to the ankle uh, because of the taper it'll oftentimes look larger but it's about the same distance and I mean you, you know you really want to check proportions on your own with your own characters and, and study them from life uh, like for instance the the shoulder to the elbow the elbow generally will line up to the midsection. So that little part where the midsection comes in, it's more noticeable obviously on women, and an hourglass is in further. Um, that elbow will usually line up right about there, depending on the position of the arm, you know, where it's at in relationship, uh, obviously is going to change. And foreshortening is a, 
another thing that's going to change it. So if the arm is coming out this way, it's obviously going to appear a lot higher. But there's there's those measurements that you do. Like another one is generally the head is about one third the distance across. Now I think on females it's a little bit better to err on the side of two heads or two and a half or something like that. But again, that's where checking your own proportions based on the style that you like is going to have a big deal, a, a big influence uh, when it comes to comics. I'm going to get rid of this one. This is just ugly. Um, because, you know, like for instance with traditional uh, drawings, um, let me grab a new layer here, and you're doing a, a standard character uh, for, say, figure drawing or realistic drawing, it's only going to be about seven and a half heads tall. So let's take this. This is usually how I'll start. If I'm struggling with proportions, I'll do something like this off to the side. So two, four, six, eight. So right there, that's this is closer to even a little bit taller than uh, standardized heads or, you know, like a traditional figure drawing. But for me, I, I would go even taller than this for a comic illustration. So if I bring that over here, you can see that, you know, I'm already going well past that with my proportions. But I that's what I would do because to me, more of a superhero figure would be almost like pretty much like nine heads tall. But again, this is going to be specific to the type of style that you like and what you're looking to do. But just get used to measuring parts of the body with other parts of the body. Uh, it's the quickest way to kind of uh, work that out, I think. So let's, uh, let's try another one where we take start off with the head we'll do the uh, torso kind of leaned over so I'll get that rib cage shape in there trying to already draw it in uh, somewhat in perspective or a foreshortened angle I guess and then the pelvic and again trying to always just try to keep in mind that you can twist and turn each one of these and then try to angle them different ways so the way I try to best explain this let me get a quick pose in place and then I'll show you what I'm uh, getting ready to explain here so I'll do something like a squatting pose and it's really helpful to like mix these poses up and do a variety of just you know you don't want to get in the habit of drawing everything straight up and down obviously so try squatting poses just somebody sitting there sipping their coffee or whatever um, you know get your friends to pose for you and take shots and, and draw them into superheroes that's probably one of the best things you can do to really get in the habit of doing that uh, especially if you're somebody that feels like you need a lot more reference to get these scenes worked out. Uh, getting your friends to pose and your family is, is a really helpful uh, thing to do. There's a quick squatting pose. And then just call it good at that. And just stamp out a bunch of those. So you just keep them quick, down to a couple minutes, things like that. And uh, really clock in a lot of them. And you'll, uh, you'll watch yourself get... A lot more comfortable with this and this is a great warm-up exercise for going to draw any kind of storytelling in my opinion uh, just like stamping out a bunch of facial expressions before you get ready to draw your story is a good idea okay let me read through a couple of these again real quick uh, I'm Mario watching from work good deal hope you don't get in trouble for that where the abdomen meets the pelvis and twisting poses is always tough for me. Any tips or advice on that would be awesome. Okay. Uh, well, you can see I just struggled with it as well in that previous pose. So uh, I don't know that I'll be the greatest to explain it, but I'll do my best. So essentially, um, yeah, that twisting thing is, is tricky. And I would just recommend, you know, with anything you face like that, you know, the fact that you're, you know, you've been saying that, you know, it means that that's where you need to approach next with your art. I, that's the way I look at it. A lot of people would probably contest that idea or that thought process. But to me, that's always how we find out, you know, our best secrets and, and our, our abilities or whatever when we start to attack the things that give us the most trouble. Like, I always have trouble with the chest meeting to the shoulder and different angles. So I, I make sure to approach that each day. I have trouble with the way the forearm twists in relationship to the shoulder. And likewise with the pelvic and, and the way the legs meet and the way it twists. So as far as, you know, working through that, I would just say always start with, with basic stuff first. So you start with the side and, you know, you get used to drawing the relationship where the pelvic angles down a bit further like this. The, the waist comes up, uh, the superhero pose and, and just people in general, but really uh, prevalent in the superhero form is the chest tilts back the solar plex comes out 
So I'm drawing this obviously from a profile. That's really skinny right there. And then the lats come back this way. The glutes, the legs, you know. So this there's this action where it goes like this, like this, back this way, and the leg comes back out like that. Um, so it's it's helpful to recognize that first in basic sketches like this, side shots or whatever, and then go over and try to do the more complex ones. And then the thing I always find the most helpful is breaking down each shape individually and really studying it and then each connection of each shape. So if I was to draw the pelvic on a downward angle like this, maybe one leg uh, coming down like this, the twist of the torso. So I would study some, I'll tell you, the thing that I think would be best for this is like study people either in gymnastics or dancing uh, because you're going to see them really contort uh, the abdomen and, and that's what you want to study if that's what you're struggling with. So you know, you, you connect each one of these with like, um, you know, the directional lines and the way that you think they're heading. So you've got the rib cage here. And I tend to like overdraw stuff at first to kind of get it all in place. And then I'll just soft erase and then really lighten it because you don't want to segment too much stuff like I'm doing here. But you want to look at the relationship in which it comes down and kind of goes to this leg. Like there's almost this running line and, and this could be called an action line or a motion line or a gesture or whatever. Um, so maybe this leg is tucked back this way and then you know superhero pose you're probably gonna have the leg come out like this. You know the muscles are gonna wrap around and this is where rope drawing is really effective. So rope drawing is just where you basically you know you draw the muscles as as these interconnected kind of lines, these sweeping lines uh, and I always feel that when you tend to do this, you get a lot more organic uh, feel to your work. Um, and you can study uh, tutorials and lessons by uh, Todd McFarlane. He uh, he talks about that a lot. It's actually where I, I noticed it a long time ago when doing this type of drawing and even studying his type of work. But then he, he put a, um, a title to it and in, in calling it rope drawing. I'm um, not sure if he learned that in school or where he got that. But it, it basically uh, is a perfect you know relationship of the way that the muscles flow from one part of the body to the next um, versus getting in the habit of saying oh here's a stomach muscle here's a stomach muscle here's a stomach muscle or whatever and you start making them look very like bubbly and everything starts to take that look this rope drawing method will tend to give a little bit more um, realistic feel in my opinion uh, let's see thanks for the answer I've just been lifting my hands they're jittery uh, but they feel more flowery. They, yeah. So, so if you if you need that extra stability when you're drawing, rest your hand more, uh, use your elbow. Uh, there's lots of ways to pivot. Um, but yeah, I guess like right now, I do feel my hand resting against the screen more um, than just keeping the uh, the tip on the screen, like you were saying. Um, and the other thing is this: when you start off a sketch, it's not a bad idea to actually. Um, hold the hold the pencil uh, back from uh, the tip and then like lose control basically especially in the beginning of the sketch so let me get rid of these and kind of illustrate that for you real quick so essentially um, and hopefully nobody was drawing that stuff as I took the visibility off um, yeah thanks Dominic I appreciate that uh, you're the best too bud um, so so essentially like you know what I'm saying about holding the the, the pen back and forcing yourself to lose control is doing stuff where you're going to get more sweeping lines. So less control and you're just kind of, you know, they don't even have, we don't even have to start with that one, two, three method this time. We'll just start with a very scribbly, I'm holding the, I'm actually holding the pen almost back towards the eraser side of the, uh, the Wacom pen. And I'm just scribbling. So I'm going to picture that the form's leaning forward, one arm's kind of out this way, one's sweeping back and going away from, uh, camera receding into space I do little wedges for the hands uh, maybe it's a running pose one legs forward so there's that uh, counter pasta <laughs> counter posta I said pasta because I'm hungry um, and then one leg back and then you know we use the, uh, the little arc you know we know the leg kind of tucks back it so the leg usually goes like this and then back this way just a little bit I mean that's that's a little too crazy but that kind of thing should be prevalent even in an angled shot like this. So by holding the pen at the very back, it's forcing me to obviously scribble and, and, and not tense up on my drawing. 
And I think that's really important, especially on those those times when you feel like um, you're not drawing as well or you're just struggling to create or any of those times. I think it's real important to to do scribbling. You know, it's like it's the thing I always do. Like when I really feel like I'm struggling, I'm not going to quit drawing that day, but I am going to lighten up and just try to let it become a little bit more organic and I'm going to scribble out a bunch of ideas. I kind of look at it like I'm purging a computer or purging my mind. I'll, I'll, I'll scribble out a bunch of bad stuff to get to something good. Uh, I don't know how else to explain it. So I, I just, you know, I rough out thumbnails and I might do the, you know, the perspective and do, do some buildings and, but keeping it all just extremely rough where you can barely tell what it is, but I know what it is and I, and I'm getting, uh, some of that information out there. I'm sparking creativity. Um, so that's just something I feel is very important to do, and I think it really helps with figure drawing. Uh, just like, you know, people that study figure drawing, they, they do gesture drawing a lot uh, because it's so it's so important to get better at understanding these forms. Uh, and you can just stamp out a lot of these. You know, it doesn't take much time to do this, so it's better to rough out, I don't know, 50, 100 of these things, and you're going to see a, a definite improvement uh, in your work by doing that and then just being okay with them not being perfect you know just drawing it real fast scaling it down sometimes I'll scale it down I'll rework it uh, at a very small image and see what I see that way uh, and obviously I'm not looking at any references would obviously come out better uh, if I was looking at reference and all right let's see let's do some more superhero um, esque so let's do the Let's do the full mannequin this time, and let's do the we'll do something traditional. Where let's, let's take this one a step further, but now let's make them he's like flying up in the air or something like that. So tilting the uh, shoulders here. You can always do the boat out chest, so I'll get that in early on. So the solar plex, and then. Now, as far as the curvature, the thing that I try to always do is, is something like this, where I do like this, this dowel going through, and that's that's kind of the, the tilt of the head, not necessarily the position of the eyes. I'll have the eyes up high looking up, and then the shoulders will be at this tilt right there, and then I'll make sure that the hips are at another tilt like this. And I think that's real important to do when you're ever trying to work out action shots, um, in anything where you just want it to be a little bit more interesting to really pay attention at these tilt and then the tricky part is the twist so again I'll do the three kind of segments to the abdomen and then I'll tilt the uh, hips right here so they're going like this with that line and I'll have the counter pose with legs up like this Something like that there's a knee and then this one back and I want this to really recede back into space. So um, another thing that's helpful to do with some of these poses, if you really want to kind of get that feeling of depth, you can do some uh, perspective lines like this. It's really important to, to do this sometimes um, so that you can get a, a nice feeling of, of depth in your work. And they don't have to be perfect. You know, obviously uh, Clip Studio here, you can do nice perspective or perfect perspective lines. Uh, but you don't have to when you're rough sketching like this. Even something like this uh, will give you the, the concept of, of more perspective. And then what that does, it reinforces your imagination to say, okay, this leg needs to be pretty large right here, and then it needs to taper off and get really small back here to really convey that that depth. You know, So you do give them this little, little leg back there. This one up here. You know, we'll make this arm pretty pretty hefty. Like this. Do the opening for the wrist. And again, all these little circular lines you see like that, or circles, are to reinforce that uh, that uh, dimensional kind of feel. Oh, sorry, it's not scrolling down to my comments there. Okay, um, oh, sorry about that. I missed a bunch of comments. Let me scroll down here and see what you guys are saying. 
<laughs> voting for president. Yeah, please no politics. Thanks, Dominic. Yeah, I'm I'm so not into politics, and that's why you guys never hear me talk about them. Because um, if I started, I probably wouldn't stop, and I don't, I don't like, yeah, I don't even like getting on that. We'll leave that out here. Um, I would like to hear your thoughts on the pros and cons to traditional art versus the pros and cons to digital art. Thank you, and I enjoy your videos. They help greatly. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Terry. I appreciate that. Okay, so uh, so pros and cons. Let me, I'll just give you my short list because that's a that's a live stream video set all on itself. Self, obviously, uh, pros and cons. Because I, I get into this a lot because I love traditional art. I, I do traditional art. I have a I have a drawing of Batman sitting on my art table, just staring at me right now that I gotta hurry and finish. Um, the, the bad thing is about traditional art, or I shouldn't say the bad thing. I, I love traditional art. It's great. I do it more for commissions. I do it at, when I go to my comic conventions. It's all uh, traditional, uh, even though I'm thinking about bringing my iPad Pro the next time and doing a demo uh, there. But I, I do commissions there, so I usually leave my digital stuff at home. Um, but the reason I'm a digital artist isn't because I love one of the, over the other, really. It's, it's more, more or less out of necessity. Uh, I'm a, I make money as a digital artist. Uh, I make more money off, off being a digital artist than I do by being a traditional artist. Um, now, if that ever changed, then maybe I would go the other way a little bit more. But the, I don't think that one is necessarily better than the other. I don't think that one is any different than the other, in a sense, other than the way that you're just producing your art. Uh, there's certain days I feel like I draw better traditionally, and certain days I feel like I'm drawing better digitally. It's It's just... It's just a different tool, a series of, of techniques and tools. Um, but the reason why I went digital is because one of the ways I needed to derive some income was to do uh, a little bit of uh, storyboard work. So I wasn't getting enough comic work, and I had to do all that digitally. Um, so that was really the big push for me because um, I didn't get the call to uh, to work for you know the big guys like Marvel, DC, and stuff like that. Um, you know, Maybe I'm just not good enough, and, that, and that's okay. Um, but I did get the opportunities to start drawing storyboards for television commercials, um, working with agencies out of like New York, LA, some even out of the country. So, so I had to, you know, and obviously when you're working with people like that, digital is way more productive. It just, it's, it's almost, I would say it's just a necessity. I don't think you could work the other way and be competitive. So that's why I work digitally. I still love working traditionally, but I'm faster digitally, and my my uploads and my my share times, uh, even through the stuff I do with my Patreon and through Gumroad, it all makes a lot more sense to, for me to do that all digitally, and to you know sustain an income so I can keep doing this stuff. But yeah, if somebody walked up and said, "Hey, I'm going to pay all your bills and you're going to draw Spider-Man," then yeah, definitely I would be all about that, and I would I'd do it in whatever way was conducive to that. You know, so that's. That's my spiel on that. I don't think one should replace the other, to tell you the truth, because I'll tell you what, first time you lose power uh, and your, your laptop wasn't plugged in or whatever <laughs> or whatever you're using or your tablet runs out of juice, you're going to wish you were working traditionally at that point. So it's, I don't think one really replaces the other. All right, uh, what else? Did I miss a few more here. Yeah, no problem, Spartan King. You're welcome. Uh, how do you draw the exact picture that you have in your mind? And is it even possible, like creating the perspective, choosing colors, all without a reference? Um, you know, you just keep working through it. So, like, you see this pose here. It's really clunky, and it's got some real flaws to it. But I, if I really get excited about something I'm trying to do, I just don't give up on it. You know, I'll just keep redrawing it. I'll move this leg up a bit. You know, you see he's got this weird kind of girly buttocks and, and hip thing going on here. It's supposed to be a guy, so it's it's not looking right in that regard. But that's where I just keep adjusting it. I don't give up on it. Um, and that's why it's so important to do uh, stuff that you're passionate about, designs and, and artwork that you're passionate about, because you will like have the energy to stay with it and, and finish it. Because, um, you know, it's not, at first it's not going to come out right. So I think the big thing isn't necessarily you know, having this perfect image in your mind, as much as it is being okay to make adjustments and uh, and keep working on the, the thumbnail image that you had. So for instance, whenever I start a project, I think the best way to do that, oh, let me adjust this, I'm still trying to get this arm right, is uh, 
is to like do it like this. So so you start off like this and say I was drawing this, this scene over here. My first idea is probably going to be like this. I'm drawing it larger because I'm trying to explain more of the process. But my initial thumbnail of a concept is going to be like this. And yours should be too. If you if you get in the habit of thumbnailing everything out, and you know thumbnail because it's really small and uh, forces you to not think about um, not try to over detail the work at this early stage because you should never do that you should work out your your composition your perspective maybe these are buildings and he's flying up in the air so you got this perspective of downward shot and you'll be amazed at how much information you can pack into these little thumbnails I mean you can get a little bird over here you know and maybe a, a bigger bird and a bigger wing right there to, to uh, do the whole depth relationship you can get some little cars in here in a street and if you if you plan out your work this way before you go to this then it's gonna make a lot more sense you're, you're gonna be able to use this this one here as your template and work through it you're also gonna be able to veto ideas and go you know what this building doesn't make sense there uh, I want to get rid of it you know and you're gonna be able to change ideas a lot quicker in this little doodad than trying to work on it in this big one so I think a lot of uh, beginning artists uh, make the mistake of going right to this full-on well-drawn crazy composition and of course you're gonna get bogged down you're gonna lose interest you're gonna mess up and um, all that stuff happens so it's, it's better to do that in your tiny little thumbnails and just so you know if you're doing a comic you should do the whole book like this before you even do your first page um, in my my head uh, what I think you should do and work through it with your writer or if you're the writer do do that all the way through make all your changes here then start working out your scenes here and, and believe me you'll thank yourself later for doing that all right let me read through these again real quick whenever you get a chance what advice can you give on poses and perspective with backgrounds um and then JS Ward says oh, I'm working watching from work too man you guys must have some uh, really lenient bosses or managers or whatever's going on there all right so uh, yeah so so drawing them in perspective again right back to this where you got those perspective lines in place if you struggle getting your characters in perspective start off with some kind of grid like so here's here's a here's a floor grid right you could do a couple lines coming up and then you draw your character in that in that space you know so actually I'd be too short um, so don't always get in the habit of doing this where you draw on, on a white screen uh, the entire time or a white piece of paper uh, get in the habit of constructing it against a grid and it gives you a floor plane to work with and allows you to really man I don't have to check on my my son he's not wanting to nap up there and Sounds like he's losing his marbles. So yeah, work on that floor plane like that, and it will really help you, uh, you know, fill out the perspective of your characters within a scene. Uh, if you're struggling with that, it might be that you're drawing against a, a blank background too much, and that's that's something I'm guilty of. You shouldn't do that. All right, let me read through these again real quick. All right, I already handled that one. Have you ever tried Paint Tool Psy? Uh, like it's all a lot smoother than Manga Studio. It feels like you're drawing on paper. Um, no, I I, uh, I don't think I have. I, you know, and, and there's a lot of them that, that do have a little bit better feel to like say the penciling. Uh, like for instance, I think Sketchbook Pro still has a little bit more natural drawing aspect um hold on guys i gotta take a quick break just give me one sec sorry
sorry about that. My uh, my son's not wanting to nap, and that's what I get for live streaming during his nap time. But anyways, all right. So back to it. Let me see where we left off. That's great for the uh, the live stream, isn't it? Uh, t -t 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 -t. Where were we at? Have you ever tried Paint Tool Side? Yeah. So so back on that, I I try not to deviate too much. They will all do something a little bit better, right? So Manga Studio. The reason I go with Manga Studio Clip Studio Paint is it does the most per package. So so for comic creation, in my opinion, and you know, remember I'm in no way paid to say this. I just say it out of pure honesty. Uh, well, I do sell some Manga Studio brushes that you can get on my Gumroad, but that's it. That's my only little connection to promoting it really. Other than I just I use it. You know, I use it to create my Blackstone comic. I'm using it right now because it's got the most options. That's, that's why you see all these windows. And the brush creation process is, is awesome on this. So so to me, it's like, yes, you can get better drawing. And like sometimes I'll draw on Sketchbook Pro or I'll draw on Procreate on my iPad. And then I'll bring it over. But for the full creation process, and if you had to go with just one program, this is going to do the most for you. It's got the best perspective tools. It's got the most options. Uh, for comic creation, the EX version is bar none. You can't beat it. So so that's why I stick with it. And there's a catch-22 to using all these products for their, their strengths, right? So if you start to go with, well, this one does this better and this one does that better, because I, I, I do it because I have to use them all because I showcase them here on my channel, um, there, there's a little bit of a, a mishap that happens there. You're not fully exploiting the ability of any one program by bouncing around like that. So you got to be careful. Uh, and some people are really good at multitasking, and others like me aren't. <laughs> so I got to be aware of that, and I got to make sure that I don't uh, flutter around too much. And then I don't, again, I don't extrapolate all the necessary or uh, good information that I can get from this one program. So just be careful of that. But yeah, I'm sure uh, Sai is a good tool. There's lots of great tools just for drawing. Um, I actually like Procreate just for sketching, but um, but I can't do my full. I work like you see me doing here well these are sketches I can do this but I can't do full production work in it yet uh, let's see do you typically keep your figures in a separate layer from your backgrounds yeah so I do a thing where it's uh, I generally will do like if we took this character let's see what layer I got here uh, generally this character would be on his own layer so that I can edit them and then the background would be on another layer I make I may have like stuff down here on a separate layer so I'll do like a one, two, you know, three, that kind of thing right there. Uh, and then as I progress through the work, as I add more and more information, I'll tend to segment. I do this a lot with painting. I don't do it as much for comics, but sometimes I will, uh, you know, especially in the inking process, I guess I do. I'll create separate layers uh, behind layers because uh, that can be effective for, you know, like I said, inking, mainly digital painting, though. So, like, uh, for instance, this leg here. I'll end up cropping, as I progress through the work, I'll end up cropping this leg out and pasting it on another layer just like that. Because sometimes as you're painting, you can paint behind and get a nice crisp edge. Uh, it's not as necessary for drawing, but but yeah, I do keep the character on a separate layer. just makes it easier. Uh, let's see. Is there a right or wrong way to do to doing this? I usually start with the eyes and build out from there. That's just how I've always done it. So J.S. Ward says that. Um, no, I mean, I don't think there's any right or wrong way to ever create your comic art or your art in general. It, it, we're all just, you know, doing whatever feels right. And there's a series of techniques that we all share. And some things work better for, for some styles than, than others. So whatever works for you, um, this is just what works for me for the most part. So this is what I feel the most comfortable with. But it's not necessarily a right or wrong kind of thing you know I mean you, you know you're gonna learn different things as you go and then something may totally revolutionize uh, what you were you thought was the right way to do it um, so yeah you should constantly be uh, changing you know your perspective and and uh, learning new things in my opinion this leg still looks funny I think it's just the overall bend in this angle
Okay, so what would you guys like to see? Some more poses? Or you want me to refine some stuff? What do you think would be a good uh, thing to cover? Um, I didn't want this to be an overly long one. I just wanted to do a quick sketch session. Let's see, and I guess... Oh, Sai, I see what you're saying. So he, Dominic wrote, Sai is not good for professional use, and I guess Robert is a professional. <laughs> yeah, I, I am a professional somewhat. Uh, I do this for a living, but I don't get to really draw comics for a living other than I showcase it on YouTube and I teach comics on the side. So in a sense, I do, but I'm not a professional like, you know, I, didn't, I don't work for Marvel or DC or Image or any place like that. But I still manage to derive my income from my the way that I produce stuff. Uh, the way that you guys support me on here is, is one of the ways. So essentially, I am a professional artist, but not in the per se you know, just comic industry, you know what I mean? So that's that's something I always try to be very forthcoming about and honest with everybody. All right, Brain Gamer, can you show how you draw a leg kneeling forward? Um, yeah, I can try. That's always a tricky one for me as well, but let me see if I can uh, get that in here real quick. Uh, so a, a leg kneeling forward, what I would say there is first, you know, kind of figure out where the knee is going to be. That's always the easiest way for me anyway. So I'll do a circle for the knee. I'll do a cylinder shape coming this way, something like this. Um, then the, the knee is not a circle. If anything, it's actually more of a box shape from this angle. So I'll do that. And then I'll picture the way the bottom leg is receding back, but the, the muscle is kind of sitting under the, the larger mass of the top of the leg and then receding back into space. And then you got the foot, uh, if you see it, sometimes it gets covered. It's depending on the, the way it's bending here. So I'll start off very rough, and I'll get in just some some starting points, basically. So something like this. And this is very crude, but um, this is how I do it anyways. And then I start to think about, okay, the, the one muscle is closer to the inside of the leg, so it sits up higher. Um, and then this one sits further back and then also the way that the, the leg attaches to the uh, the hip is going to tilt now whether or not this gets covered based on the uh, the perspective that we're at that's another story but if it, if you are going to see it it connects to the pelvic on an angle so let's just do that let's go ahead and where's my blue line oh there it is convert that to blue line add a layer over top and then I'll get in here and just try to refine this a bit. Now the thing I always struggle with with the knee is like it's does a shape. I think it's like this where it comes out like this. Get a little bit of that. I think it's the bone right there. And then here you get the muscle. Something like this. This one up here. And the tricky thing is to make it look like it's going back, you know, and, and, and where to overlap the muscles is always a tricky part. And then the side of the knee, I want to say it comes down into here, and then you immediately get that lower part of the leg. And based on the way they're pressing against each other, these shapes are going to obviously change. Uh, but we'll say it's something like this. This isn't going to be perfect. And, you know, and keep in mind, if this is something you're struggling with and, and you can't get it just right, do this pose, take a picture of it, and then stylize it. You know, I'm not saying draw over top, or you don't have to trace it or nothing like that, but it will definitely give you some reference to where, you know, all this stuff is kind of positioned, and then you just give it a superhero-esque uh, look, you know, so you got all the cool superhero muscles and, and style. Another thing you always do with the leg right here is always shade this bottom leg. It immediately makes it look like it's going back into space, not to mention it saves you a bunch of time on detailing all that work which is nice as well so yeah just get in there shade all that up put a nice heavy shadow on the top of the foot put a drop shadow here to you know so all this stuff helps propel it forward make it look a little bit more realistic or thought out or whatever you do the same thing you can have a nice shadow right there from the upper body uh, landing against that and I'm sure that's really incorrect because I'm not looking at nothing. I'm just kind of imagining what it would look like. And I think it looks pretty pretty weird right now. So I would just keep nipping and tucking. You know, I just constantly move stuff around 
and I redraw it, and if all else fails, I start, uh, I set up my camera on my tripod, and I take some crazy picture of me trying to look like a superhero. I put my, you know, I'd have my leg up on a chair like this. I can draw a chair pretty quick. Bam, chair. That's even a weird looking chair, but oh well. Okay, so let's see what else we got here. I don't know if you draw a leg. It's been, it has been less options yet. What's that? It has less options yet, but like every other artist prefer a software. There is no software just for professional. Oh, okay. They're still talking about that other program. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that because I don't know what that's all about. Uh, how often do you stream? I'm trying to get back on Wednesdays at 5. Uh, four, I'm sorry, Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But right now I'm doing it whenever I can get a break from my schedule because I'm working on a, um, a project. And so I just, as soon as I get an opening uh, or I need to, you know, share with you guys, then I do a stream. Uh, so it's eventually it will be back at Wednesdays at 4 as soon as I can get my, my schedule a little more uh, mediated. I always start by scribbling. Yep, good idea there. Um, should I draw the background first? I'm working with pencil and paper. Uh, and Brain Gamer says yes. Yeah, probably not a bad idea. I mean, it just depends. Like if I'm working through poses, I don't. I just I work through a bunch of poses and I kind of do that as a separate exercise. But yeah, as working through a full scene, scene creation, it's probably not a bad idea because like we were talking about before with this other stuff that we had up, it's going to give you a better perspective on what you're doing. So yeah, in that regard, you should. You should do, even if it's just some of these rough lines. Like, you know, you guys just see these floating squares. I see, I see a full building with trim work and little windows and, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm already perceiving what's going on there. It doesn't have to be this ultra hyper-realistic thing for me to to kind of get an idea you know there's a little air conditioning unit on the top and you know so you can get a lot of uh thought process going on with just these basic lines so um and that's where i really i'll go back to this i really think the thumbnailing is it's highly important uh, let's see you should draw the grid lines to not lose play yeah it's it just it gives you a basis Trying to read through these. Um, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to read through these all. Sorry about that, guys. It's, I must have missed a bunch again. You guys are going back and forth about uh, Manga Studio and that other one. Yeah, well, let's just all err on the side that Manga Studio is a bit better since that's what we're using today. Uh, Oh, yeah, and then Specky Nation. I used Photoshop for 16 years, tried all the newer programs for two weeks to see which one what they were like. I converted to Manga Studio because it's by far the best for drawing and inking and coloring. Yep, pretty much agreed there. And now I'm realizing it's great for painting, or I've realized that for a while, and I've been doing a lot more painting with it. That's what my new uh, brush set's for is all paint effects. Yeah, the most well-rounded I've been doing uh, most of my sketching and procreate lately though. Yeah, I don't blame you there. Sketching is great in procreate and then I take majority of all my finished work uh, goes through Manga Studio. Clip Studio Paint. I, I gotta really just keep calling it the new name since it's not going back. Um, yeah, thanks uh, Cisco. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm gonna keep rocking some comic art for sure. <laughs> appreciate that. Alright, so a lot of this is you guys talking about the different programs so I'll let you do that and then um, let me see if there's any more questions in here yeah I missed a bunch of them oh you guys are talking about a posing app as well cool okay so let me do this if you guys got any last questions or something I should address uh, let's talk about that because we're already coming up on 50 minutes and this was actually supposed to be a, a quicker live stream where I just did some uh, pose uh, sketches. But you know how these live streams are. They all kind of take a mind of their own. Um, so let me know if you guys got any more questions uh, that I can address for you real quick. And until you say that, I'm going to just keep noodling away on this uh, superhero dude.
Yeah, one thing I like is I can just grab components of the work and just move it around so quickly. Uh, and again, that's where digital uh, kind of took the cake for me. It wasn't, you know, really wanting to be digital as much as feeling the need that I had to uh, had to do it because it speeded up uh, or sped up my work flow. And I think from this angle, we wouldn't see as much of the neck. I think that had to be a tad bigger. And I feel like this arm is too far out. Yeah, good idea, Aftermax. So Aftermax says, Rob, you should do a drawing contest, and the winner gets their drawing critiqued. Looks like Vision. Oh, nice. This Vision's got that little, little gem right there, right? Yeah, not a bad idea. We'll have to do something like that. As soon as I get this project out of the way, I'm going to have a lot more time uh, to come back and start coming up with uh, ideas. Um, I just basically, I have to, I have to get this thing done. Uh, put that baby to bed so to speak and then and then I'll have more time to get up some creative ideas to uh, work on the channel here so but yeah I do like that idea we will keep that uh, keep that in mind the winner might not need his drawing critiqued <laughs> nice unfortunately there's a lag between video and chat yeah I know that sucks just give it time. Pretty pretty soon, I'm sure it'll all be real time. However, last question, if I can, do you have some ad advices about symmetry? Um, yeah, I mean, as far as symmetry, you know, it's a tough one. But really, it just comes down to practice. And then also, um, you know, if you have to, don't be afraid to use symmetry tools just to kind of get stuff into, you know, place quicker. Um if it's if it's symmetry and you're talking about stuff on an angle and it just doesn't look right symmetrically uh, then obviously you just have to keep drawing and, and practicing till you get past that um, I'm probably not the best person to to deal with that for you because it's my symmetry sucks but um, but it's really just training your eye to spot flaws I mean it's even like this you know it's it's still way off the um, but I just keep moving things around till I get it right uh, and sometimes I'll do a redraw, but I'm trying not to do a redraw on this because I want to show you guys that usually you can maneuver things and make it look a little better. Uh, but also, you know, just sometimes getting enough stuff into place, do a soft erase and a redraw that way. So not necessarily redrawing the entire piece of art, but I can soft erase and then, you know, get rid of things that look a little funny there and, and try to come back at it and refine it a bit. But symmetry, I've been using some of the symmetrical tools in, in uh, Clip Studio here to, to work on. And, you know, the other thing is always flipping your work is, uh, is big for spotting flaws in symmetry and, and just uh, composition errors and all that. Uh, like this, I did this on a, a latest video, but let me show you this one. You go window, workspace, or wait, canvas, new window. And it'll give me a backup of this window. Oh, hopefully, man, uh, Clip Studio doesn't get too crazy here. So I got a backup of the window. Then I take uh, the one and flip it. So let's do, uh, what did I flip it with this? Yeah, so now I got a flipped version of this one. So I'll usually take this one, make it smaller. And then I'll draw on this one over here now and try to fix any of those flaws that, uh, that I see. Another thing I think that helps with symmetry is a center line. So draw the center line down the body and kind of try to spot things that way as well. So if you notice, I had the chest and the, the head and the neck and that kind of skewed. And I think from this angle, I wouldn't see as much of the upper shoulder.
I was just trying to study that other picture and see if I can spot some of the flaws and make some uh, big changes because it's, it's looking pretty weak. Um, but that's where, again, you know, we're getting excited, staying excited about a particular uh, composition, a shot, and just keep working through it is a big part of figuring it out. You know, and, and they're not all going to be great winners, uh, but the more you learn to complete your work uh, and get through it, the the more you'll you'll eventually you know figure this stuff out and you'll get to some really nice uh, works of art. I think the main thing is just to complete the work and not not give up all the time. It's really easy to to uh, stagnate and then give up on your projects and then you know thinking well I'll just keep practicing and I'll get better. But I think getting better is a process of of completing the work. You know mainly and the reason I say that is because whenever I work on a client job. I don't have the luxury of going, oh, well, I'm just not feeling it today. I'll just do it, you know, we'll come back at it next month, you know, or next week. The client's going to be like, oh, well, you're fired by first. But, uh, you know, it's just not it's just not going to work. So you have to figure out a way to get through it. Um, and you learn a lot in that process. And I got a bad sketch here, and I'm basically getting ready to throw it away because it's not working. Uh, another thing is just you know getting as much stuff roughed out in that that initial skate uh, thumbnail stage so that you can avoid uh, maybe over rendering a bad uh, pose and things like that. This is what I feel like I'm doing right here. Okay, do you usually draw your own backgrounds or do you have someone else do it? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had somebody to draw my backgrounds. No, I uh, I do it all on my own right now. I'm just uh, one guy in a studio doing what I do. So, yeah, I, d I don't have anybody drawing my backgrounds or anything like that. I don't know that I'd want to anyways. You know, I, I, I'm trying to uh, complete full-on uh, books on my own at this point. Um, but, you know, if I ever got the right team together, I guess I would do something like that. But it's not, it's not really, it doesn't really fit into what I'm doing right now. All right, trying to read through a couple of these. Okay, yeah, good chatting with you, James. I appreciate you stopping by. So, yeah, we'll do this again real soon. Let me see what uh, Cisco is saying. But I find unless you're doing just lines and not painting, you really need either a great reference picture or some sort of app. Like, yeah, I mean, reference is a great thing. And, and you know, but the trick is... You know, let me just, I'll just touch on that and then I'll call it good because we're coming up to the hour mark. So, obviously, like a shot like this, reference would be great, you know. And if I if I can't find reference, then I have to try to create reference. And that means taking silly pictures of me and my friends and family and, and trying to get this, this worked out. Uh, past that, you have to sometimes hybrid all that together. So, you gotta you got to figure out how to find parts of reference. So, you might just find this leg shot. In a particular image and work from that and so that's why that's why I always stress breaking down all these objects that's why when you guys see me talk about this stuff I say oh we're just gonna draw the abdomen today we're just gonna draw the arms today uh, because you have to learn to kind of piece them together because uh, you're not it's gonna be really difficult to find the right shots in fact you, you'll spend way too much time trying to find the right shots versus trying to make your own or just get good at faking it uh, a lot of comic artists, they just get really good at faking it. You can tell in their work that things, if you really lined it up next to a real pe uh, person, it would be strangely skewed. Uh, that's why they put certain things in shadow, so they're real smart about where to use their shadows. Um, because it just saves a tremendous amount of time. It also eliminates you spotting the fact that really this arm looks like it's floating there more than connected to the, the character and so th there's all those things combined, but it's mainly getting uh, quick enough to be able to produce these dynamic poses uh, and produce a, a full-on book. You know, and you, you're not going to be able to do that if you're constantly searching for the right image. You know, it's just too too confusing, I think. Um, so you have to, again, you got to kind of hybrid all that together. Sometimes you search, sometimes you reference. Other times, I think it's beneficial to draw a bunch of arm poses and, and stick them to the wall next to your art table draw a bunch of leg poses the ones that are giving you trouble draw those first put those next to your art table 
um, and then keep a mirror by your art table, all that, all that stuff, you know. So, all right, we're at the one hour mark, so I'm going to call it good. I appreciate everybody tuning in and watching. Uh, sorry for my bad scribbles here. It's just kind of what happens when I'm talking and drawing at the same time. Uh, if you guys got any ideas for future streams, comment below. Also, be sure to share the video so that I can keep uh, bringing you new content each week. Remember that you can support my work on Patreon where you get rewards based uh, uh, on art. You get art back. You get uh, videos that are only Patreon based. You know, you got Gumroad where I've got custom brushes and things like that. So all those things help me keep doing what I'm doing here. So uh, any last questions before I call it good? And I'll try to answer those. And then also just uh, yeah, comment in the section below and let me know what live streams you'd like in the future. It, it helps me when I can bring a particular topic to the table as we start these crazy things. Yep, you're welcome, Bromblewood. I, I appreciate you. Uh, sorry if I'm slaughtering that, but I appreciate you being here. And appreciate the thanks after Mac. Cisco, appreciate that. Thanks, Dominic. Yeah, I'll be doing another live stream real quick. I just had to kind of segue back over here to YouTube land. And, uh, yeah, I'll be doing more real soon. I, I enjoy these because it's a way for me to quickly get in, do some stuff, answer some questions. Uh, just so you guys know, if you ever comment on my videos and I don't write back, I want you to know that that's because it's better. It's actually easier for me to respond back here verbally. Uh, I'm not the greatest uh, person typing and, and writing and things like that. So sometimes people ask these very long-winded questions, and I just can't respond like that. So I'll, I'll give a short answer. But if you need a more descriptive answer, that's where live streams really excel. Something about color, light, and rendering would be nice. Okay, sounds good, Carlos. I appreciate that tip. So, yeah, so I'm going to bring it to a close. So I thank everybody very much for tuning in. Uh, as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.